Thank you so much for tuning in today. It's such a pleasure having you uh, joining me in a Bible discussion from God's Word. Today we're going to talk about how to have a healthy church. So many churches today in America are struggling and, and they're spiritually uh, lacking in things that will keep them alive in the years to come. Today, if you haven't met me, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Joseph Sullivan and I live in the Tampa Bay area where it's hot all year round, it seems. If you have watched my videos in the past, yeah, that means a whole lot. I look forward to talking with you more about the Word of God. Thank you for watching. Now, let me ask you this question. And please, when we talk about spiritual things, please have your Bible with you as well. So you, we can go into the Word of God and everything we will cover. This question is this, what makes a healthy church? If you could name a handful of things that would make a church healthy, what would they be? One of the things that I would consider would be this beautiful word that makes everything more, more real in this life. This word is love. Love is what brings families forth. It's what causes people to have relationships. It's where friendships are founded. It's what makes the sunrise so amazing in the morning when you see coming through the trees. When you love something, it, it makes everything more beautiful. Well, this book right here, if a church doesn't love it, how healthy will it be? Not very healthy, would it? If you would, please turn with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. Now, uh, this is an interesting chapter. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. It talks about the Antichrist, a lot of um, intense stuff right here. But in the passage, uh, verse 10, it has an interesting statement. What does it say in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10? It says what? These people perish because they refuse to what? Love the truth and so be saved. Now, if a church doesn't love the truth, the preacher stands up and you don't hear the Bible, you hear other things. And in worship, you don't recognize anything from Jesus Christ. Is that a Bible church? And are they loving the truth enough to prioritize it in their, their worship, in their, their assembly? No, not so much, are they? Um, so to have a good church, it needs to revolve around something. It needs to revolve around the Word of God. If it revolves around a preacher instead, or it revolves around uh, a, a, a charismatic leader, or some philosophy, or a motivational theme, but it doesn't revolve around Jesus and His Word, then that church is not a healthy church. And why I'm covering this is because if a church isn't healthy, it's not going to last. And it's not going to be accepted by God, is it? What is a church supposed to be founded on? That's another question I want to ask. Is a church supposed to be founded on a man's ideas? Founded on entertainment? Founded on personalities? Founded on things that make people excited? What should a church be founded on? Well, this is an incredible place to go to the Bible in this regard. This answers all of these questions. 1 Timothy 3.15. 1 Timothy 3.15. It says, the church is this. If you would read with me there, let me know when you get there. 1 Timothy 3.15. What does it say? 
It says God's household is what? The church of the living God. So to be his family, to be his sons and daughters of God the Father, and to be brothers and sisters of Jesus and each other, we need to be part of his church, it says. And then what does it say? The church of the living God. God's household equals being part of his church. And then it says the church of the living God is what? Its foundations and its pillar is based upon what? Is based on the truth. To have a stable church, it needs to be have a pillar, its strong foundations on truth. That's where it should revolve around. If it's founded on a personality or a character or some motivational theme or secular philosophy or a, an agenda or some entertainment, that church is going to crumble. It needs to be founded on the bedrock of Jesus Christ and his word. So to be recognized as his church, it needs to be in the truth. It needs to be founded on this truth. To be recognized as his family, the church of the living God, it needs to have this as his foundation. Now, have you ever been to a, a personal fitness trainer or a doctor or, or a dietitian? I, I have. And... Uh, they have told me I need to lose weight and rightly they are correct. What kind of advice do you think I got from these people? When I talked to a personal fitness trainer, do you think they told me, Joseph, you need to eat lots of candy, have lots of ice cream, have lots of milkshakes and cake and pie too. Do you think they said that? No, they didn't. They said, you got to eat healthy. You got to take care of your body. You got to eat fruits and vegetables. You got to eat healthy proteins. So would it make sense after hearing this advice to go home and make my major diet, my staple diet, the main part of what I eat each day, would it make sense if I was eating Hershey, candy bars and Reese's peanut butter cups and, you know, having tons of, of Ben and Jerry ice creams. Would that make sense? Would I be healthy? Now, if a church is not ingesting this as their staple diet, is that a healthy church? If they're having sweets, things that tickle people's ears and toes and makes people feel good, and warm inside motivational speeches and inspirational poems and quotes from secular sources and, and things about how to make money and how to be popular and how to uh, have girlfriends and boyfriends and all this stuff. But it doesn't teach you about doctrine and sound truths from the Bible. Even though it's sweet to one's senses, is that a healthy church? No, it's not. Of course not. What makes a healthy church? Is simply this. To abide in something. This is a great thing to memorize. It, it's something I, I talk with folks about from time to time. Second John 9. 2 John 9. Powerful, powerful passage. If you want God in your life, if you want to walk with him in the morning, and pray to him at, in the evening and, and sup with him at night and read his word and feel his fellowship. You got to do this. What it says in 2 John 9. What does it say? Okay. 2 John 9. He who goes too far and does not abide in the teaching of Christ, some passage, passages will say doctrine. 
has not what? What does it say here? If he goes too far away from this and he has not God. If we do not abide in the God's doctrine, if we go too far from the truth, the Bible says we don't have God. That's scary stuff, is it not? In the teachings of Jesus Christ, in matters of worship and morality, if we're following something other than the Bible, God's word, his preferences, his wishes, then we don't have him, it says. You know, and why I'm covering this, you know, you can go step foot into this beautiful building and there could be babies running around. There's a place nearby where a guy teaches bad stuff. He teaches you can't understand the Bible. You can't follow it. Follow me instead, he says. Yet there's a lot of families and everybody's happy. And there's lots of babies. Is that a spiritually healthy church if it's not following the Bible? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you see with your eyes. You have to just feel it with your heart as well and understand with your heart and your mind that if it's not following Jesus, it's not the right church. Let me ask you this question. Do attitudes matter? Now, to those who are married or have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, and they tell you they love you, Yet, when you need them to help you, they never help you out. When you need them to support you, they are not there for you. They say they love you, but by their actions, they don't really show it. Their attitudes are wrong. Or, or a little boy says to his mama, I love you, mama. And then he won't help her out. He won't make his bed when she asks him to do that. Or he rolls his eyes when he says he loves her. Attitudes, again, matter. A person can say something, Jesus, Jesus, I love you, Jesus, all day long. But a person's heart can be far from Jesus if they're not following Jesus' wishes and his wants. A wife can say, husband, I love you, and treat him horribly. Husband can say to his wife, wife, you are wonderful. I love you so much. And she's hurting. The kids are screaming. She needs help in the kitchen. And he's watching football and ignoring her, her pleas for help. Again, heart far from the other in matters of attitude. Matthew 15, verse 8 and 9. If you would turn with me there, Matthew chapter 15, verse 8 and 9. Again, what does the Bible say? What does it say? Matthew chapter 15, verse 8 and 9. says, in vain they worship me. In vain they worship me. It says, their hearts are far from me. Why are their hearts far from God? Why is their worship vain? Teaching the commandments. What does it say here? In vain they do worship me. Why is it vain worship? They're teaching the commandments of mere men. In matters of religion. Teaching the commandments of mere men. Instead of following God's wishes and his preferences. If a man says to his wife, I love you, and ignores her preferences, her wishes, is that true love? And if a Christian says, I love you, Jesus, and ignores his preferences and his wishes and matters of how he wants to be praised and worshipped, how he wants to be followed and obeyed and loved, is that the right attitude? Of course not. You could say, I love you, Jesus, but if you ignore what he says, if you ignore his teachings and his wishes and his desires, that's not true love. No more than a boy saying he loves his mama and ignores her and doesn't listen to her and help her out when she asks. Ignores her wishes and her preferences and her concerns. Now, in Revelation, the church is called something. Revelation chapter 1 verse 20. The church is called something. 
in this passage, it calls the church a lampstand. In the Old Testament, in the tabernacle, the lampstand was symbolic of God's presence. Where God dwelt was in the tabernacle, where the lampstand was burning. In Revelation chapter 2, the following passage, the following chapter, Revelation chapter 2, verse 5, it talks about a specific church that had lost its first love toward God. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 5, read this with me if you would. Repent and do the things you did at first. Otherwise, I will come and remove something. What is this something? I will come and remove your lampstand from its place. So God is saying in this passage, if you do not repent from not following the Bible, from your sins of ignoring the Bible, and I will come and remove what is deemed in my eyes as you being my church. So to be his church, to not have our lampstand removed, we need to follow what? We need to follow the Bible. Thank you so much for watching. A lot of things I want to cover is how to have a healthy church, how to maintain a healthy church, and how to grow a healthy church. I hope you are blessed in reading the Bible with me today. It was such a treat having you with me. Uh, and I pray that God blesses your, your, your evening and your morning. And that you have a, a blessed, glorious day today. Take care and God bless. Take care. Goodbye.